And now, Master, it is your time. You have risen. Let the words I speak bring you praise, O God, and never, never shame. Enlighten our minds, soften our hearts, and unite us that we might celebrate the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The sermon for this blessed morning, the return of the master, the return of the king. A friend of mine was, shared a story with me about last week. He called me Hop. We've been knowing each other 50 years. He called and said, Hop, it feels like hell week instead of holy week. Every year as we celebrate Holy Week, for some it feels like hell week because so much is happening. We still have people dying of the disease, of the, of the illness, COVID. People are still screaming about voter suppression. Several mass murders are taking place. And he said, when he said, he and several adults were in the room complaining about this just feels like hell week. It doesn't feel like Holy Week. And out of the mouth of babes, out of, out of the mouth of his grandchild, he came and said, said, Granddaddy, the week ain't over yet. Sunday ain't got here yet. Sunday's here. It has felt like Hell Week for many of us. That's life as we struggle to celebrate the journey of Jesus. Things still happen, good, bad, and ugly. That's life. We heard the witnesses and he talked about, it seems like evil. So many, George Floyd's death seemed like so many people witnessed the evil, witnessed who, how powerful the devil is, he witnessed. What about who's witnessing for the master? Well, up to the master's death, you can hear Lazarus from the tomb, coming out of the tomb saying, God, my master has all power. You can hear blind Bartimaeus saying, I can see. You can hear the leper saying, I've been cleansed. You can hear the woman at the well. You can hear all the ones who respond to Jesus give attention to his power and how awesome he is. And yet Good Friday comes and everything gets still and we see the disciples losing hope. Friday, Good Friday is not good. Sun doesn't want to shine. It's stormy, it's quiet. The crowd is given over to Jesus, to the angry folk and, and he dies, but Sunday morning comes. The disciples have gone back to business as usual, but you can feel it, you can sense it. This ain't over. Mary goes to the tomb, she's going, and yet people are going back. The king is gone. The king they expected to revive and save the world, the king is gone. He's on the cross, he's down from the cross, he's in the tomb, and yet Mary goes hopeful, and then the stone is rolled away, praise be to God. The stone is gone. All power, all the witnessing of the glory of God has been revealed, the, the stone is gone. And even with the stone gone, Mary still hesitates to believe. Somebody has taken my Lord away. Nobody's taking him away. This heavy stone that will take many men to roll away. The power of God is rolling away. And like the song, like the choir before, he gave his life. It wasn't taken. He gave his life for you and me. The stone is rolled away. And what does that mean? It means that all power. All powers come up from the grave and then the grave has been conquered. Death has been conquered. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, we have hope. Because he lives, every time you stand at the bedside of mama or daddy or uncle or brother or sister who's dying, you know that death doesn't have the final say. You know that soon and very soon you will go to see the king. The king has returned. In all his triumph, in all his glory, in all his splendor, he has returned because he lived and died for you and me. Unworthy as we are, he gave his blood, he gave his life for you and me. He is arisen. 
It's conquered death. And we don't have to fear death anymore. We can stand at the bedside of a loved one as I stood at the bedside of my mama who I did not want to go. I realized that soon and very soon we'll gather around the throne that, that, that all her suffering was gone and Jesus would cradle her weary body in his arms. And sooner or later, he would do the same for me. He'll do the same for you because this victory, this coming out of the tomb is more than just a stone being rolled away. It's the beginning of the victory of living over life over death. And we have to act like we're Easter people. Hold your heads up high. Act like you used Easter people have joy in the midst of voter suppression, have joy in the midst of death, have joy in the midst of hate because love will conquer hate. Don't let people make you stoop down to their level in hate because the tomb has been rolled away. Hear that. The little children can still uh, play hopscotch. They can still do double dash. They can still run and rip. They can still say, I believe tomorrow's going to come. And no matter what they face today, shortages of food or whatever they got shortages of, tomorrow is going to come because the king has returned. And the king has said, my people will not go hungry. The king has said, my people will not be oppressed. The king will say, the glory of God shall be revealed. And it has. This is a day that we rejoice. It is more than about Easter trappings. It's about the trapping of death. It is more than about celebrating just food with family. It's the, it's the time of celebrating the food of life, the gift of life, the spiritual gifts. It's a time of understanding what it really means to be in fellowship, embracing God's world. It's a time in being in love and charity with your neighbor. It's a time in believing and hoping that the future is preferred and God has the future. God has the whole world in his hands. In his hands, he's got you. He's got me. He's got everything. And in his hands, we celebrate. We take charge. We know that history will be better. We know that tomorrow will be better. We know that each day is a day that we ought to savor, that we ought to embrace, that we ought to kiss, that we ought to love. Each day ought to be a, one of, of memory making. Each day ought to be one of story making. E each day it ought to be one of be us being able to journal, leave on paper in our hearts about the glory of God. Because every day we witness God's miracles and sometimes we just suppress it and forget it. But God is active every day. This is Easter, we're Easter people. How do Easter people respond? We respond with God's love, knowing that we have been unworthy, but he came, lived and died to save you and me. His precious blood was given for you and for me, and that's worth rejoicing. That's worth celebrating. That's worth getting up this Easter morning and saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to God, because God has washed away my tears. God has taken my his blood and washed and cleansed me. God has embraced me when I'm lonely. He's embraced me when I'm hungry. He's embraced me when I'm hurting. He's embraced me when I'm betrayed. He has taken me to a new level, taken me to greater heights. And oh, I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. I just want to do my little holy dance. I just want to tell folk. I want to run to the barber shop. I want to run the run, I want to run to Walmart. I want to run to the store. I want to run everywhere and say Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's alive. Praise be to God. He's alive. He's alive in the children's speeches. He's alive in my heart. He's alive in my church. He's alive in my world. He lives. He lives. He lives. And he reigns. Praise be to God. Because that's who God is. That's who he is. He shows up every day. And like Ray Charles says, I'm, he's going to make it do what it do, baby. He's going to make the sun come up. He's going to have new babies born. He's going to have the flowers blooming. He's going to have the birds flying. He's going to have, have me and you doing what we do best. He is going to have us witnessing and testifying and telling people what God has done for us as we struggle through heart disease, as we struggle through cancer, as we struggle through blood pressure, as we struggle through, lose, struggle through losing of sight, we struggle through losing uh, our power and strength as we get older. We can say that, that, that God is still with us, whether we're in a nursing home or we're at home. We can say God is with us. Even when, when they take your keys away and say you can't drive anymore, and God says, I got you. I'm with you. I'll send somebody to get your groceries. When you can't do what you used to do, don't worry about it. You're still in my hands. Just hold on. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. Easter morning. 
I stand by the tomb. I understand why the angels are there. I understand Mary's yearning. I understand the disciples have now have hope. The master has returned. And what it says, the king is back and they ain't going nowhere. They can't take me away from you again. They can't crucify me again. They can't wound me again. This is a one-time ordeal. And I've given everything I have for you and for God's world. And then he asked only of us, praise me in your world all the days of your life. Every day you wake up, I just need you to praise me. I need you to make life a celebration. I don't need you to whine. I don't need you to cry. I don't need you to, to, to be pessimistic. I don't need you to put people down. I don't need you to hurt people. I don't need you to suppress people. I don't need you to say, if you stand in line and I give you water, I give you food, then that's, that's a crime. I don't need you to say that I can do anything to your body. I can put my, 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 my knee on your neck. I don't need you to be able to do all those things. I need you to say that I will lift you as I climb. I need you to say that I will cry when you cry. I'll laugh when you laugh. And my journey won't be a solo journey. Uh, no man or woman is an island. We're on this world to live and to prosper together, side by side, brother and sister. And it certainly, certainly matters. And it matters because you and I are willing to give all we got to give for one another. One of the stories I've shared with you was <laughs> one that I heard early in my ministry little boy's sister was getting ready to have an operation and uh, they wanted to, she had a rare blood type and her brother had it. So they were asking family members to store blood for her for this operation. And so I asked the little brother to give a pint of blood. And he had this serious look on his face and he just, he paused and he thought about it. And he said, yeah, I'm gonna go pray. Prayed about it and came back and said, yeah, I, I'll, I'll give a pint. And when he got to the place to give the blood, it was on the <clears throat> table. He asked the doctor, he said, I'd like to have a glass of milk and some Rice Krispies before I croak. And the doctor said, croak? He said, yeah, I'm getting ready to die. Said, die? He said, yeah, you asked me to give my blood for my sister. It's going to kill me. So... I want some Rice Krispies and some milk before I die. But the doctor reassured him he was not about to die. But the doctor was so overwhelmed with the fact that this little boy was willing to die for his sister, to give her his blood. That little boy understood <clears throat> the sacrifices you make for one another. He understood the sacrifices that Jesus made for all of us. And so our witness ought to be, yes, I will give all I have to give, even if I die. Because I know the mass has conquered death. And hallelujah, praise be to God, it's Easter morning. Thank God, thank God, thank God. He has arisen. He has arisen and he lives. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us pray. Lord, we just celebrate this morning. You have come out of the tomb in full glory and splendor. We pray for those, oh God, who just want to say yes to you this morning, who say, yes, I repent of my sins. Come into my life, Lord. I want to live for you. I want to be a part of your army. Those folk who on Facebook know that they can contact us or any, any church open in your name where the crosses are made the symbol and say to them, I have said yes. I need your instruction and direction from here on. If it's us, we'll be pleased. If it's another church, they'll be pleased. But it's so simple. So we offer you that possibility. And for those who will be joined, who will be with us in glory sightings, you have the same opportunity. So we give thanks to God and we invite you to do what you do and, what, and help God do what God does best. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.